get myself. Angela always looks so well composed. Yeah, <laughs> that's because I think I'm about 28 in that photo. <laughs> Holly, I just love your hair. So awesome. Thank you. What about I'm mine? Get myself no, no, right. Meg, hand out the compliments. John, John wants some one too. John, I love your hair. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Not a problem. Get, I'm going to get some water. I'm try to. <laughs> You do have the luxury, John, of never having a bad hair day. That's true. Yes. Not everyone can say that. So we're waiting for uh, John McCabe is not going to make it. Liz and John Page. I'm here. Liz is here. Oh, there you are, Liz. Hi. Yeah. For John Page. There's John too. Great. So Liz, are you here just on phone? Cause there's no photo for you. I know that's cause I still have my camera covered. So oh. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, God, that's all right. You can put a cool picture up. Like I think I have Elizabeth. Oh no, mine is, no, I don't have Elizabeth. Well, usually I have a. Yeah, it's, um, it says her name. Start. Pardon? Yeah. Um, before the meeting actually starts, the, the taping has started already. Thanks to Angela. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Participatory Budgeting Commission uh, is being conducted by a remote participation. So I am, because of that, um, required to have a roll call. So I'll say everyone's name and you say that you're here. Uh, Kathy Shane. Here. Liz Larson. Here. Holly Bowser. Here. John Fenske. Here. John Page. Here. And I note that John McCabe is not here. He's not able to make the meeting. Something came up at the last minute. And Meg Gage, here. Um, I want to encourage people to mute, uh, unmute, mute when you're not speaking. If you're somewhere where you have a lot of background noise, it makes it easier. Um, the meeting is being recorded to the web. Uh, and this is uh, allows for people to see it later who aren't here now or for any of us, for example, a person who's doing minutes to uh, go back and look at something that they didn't capture in their notes. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, uh, it is 3.33. First of all, uh, I wanted to, um, Angela can't stay for the whole meeting and she's not able to take minutes and she's done more than her duty. So we need a minute taker. Is there anybody who's up for that this time? I can do it. John, you are an angel. Thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, I will, uh, please, if I, any of us can help you, let us know. Uh, Angela's detailed minutes don't have to be the model. Um, although it's extremely helpful to have such a good uh, minute taking. I want to get, I've asked her to stick around for the minutes uh, and then Angela is going to get off the phone because she has a very busy afternoon. Let's take a look at the agenda. Just to, I always think it's good to everybody buys into what the agenda is to make sure that I captured what people want and uh, everybody has equal control over the agenda. Now, of course I can't, here it is right in front of me. Any comments on the agenda? I'd like to add one thing under topics not reasonably identified 24 hours before the meeting, which is to look at the next meeting after the next one. Our next meeting is November 12th. And um, I know some of us are busier than others and it's helpful to have at least one more meeting um, on the calendar. So we'll, I'm adding that if that's okay. Anything else anyone wants to add or shift? The priority for this meeting, the goals are to discuss uh, and amend, if, if that's appropriate, the second draft uh, consensus memo. And I think we should call it consensus outline uh, or whatever. Kathy suggested calling it an outline. I think that's a great idea. Any other comments on the agenda? So uh, let's, I wanted to ask Angela to stick around just for the going over the minutes to thank you 
four amazing minutes and you're not actually officially on our committee, but you've done it, I don't know, two or three times. So thank you. Um, does anybody have any, so reviewing the minutes cannot be a time to obviously correct them if you need to. It's also a time to draw attention to something that you want uh, people to remember that we said. Um, are there any, any comments on the minutes? I really appreciated Angela putting the link for the video at the top. I think that's a real good addition to the minutes, if people agree, so that people who want to go back and view it can easily find where that is. That was excellent. So Meg, if I can just interject, um, normally our protocol is to thank people at the end of their term of service, but having been to several of your meetings, I just wanted to take an opportunity and say thank you all. Um, you're midstream, and I know it seems like you know, the end is in sight, but just thank you so much for all of your hard work. And um, I appreciate the time and the energy and the thoughtful responses. So it's been a pleasure sitting with you and I'm sorry I can't stick around this afternoon, but thanks again for all of your efforts. Yeah, well, thank you. Anybody wanna comment before Angela gets off? I actually have a question for Angela. Since you have initiated this meeting, are we going to be able to share screens? I think when we get to discussing the outline, it would be really helpful if we could share screen on that. So I think she's shifted the host to me. Okay, good. And, and since you're all panelists, I believe you have that ability right. to, to share screen. Right. Okay, good. But before Angela gets off, I wanted to ask, uh, again, this is not a correction of the minutes, but something that was said that I thought was a good idea on page two, number five, the bullets. Shane suggested the slideshow be shared with the council and then uh, we all suggested that it um, be on Amherst Media. Has any has that happened? Do we know, or is it scheduled? I, I don't think it's something that I've reached out to Amherst Media yeah. to do. I think maybe we would save it and have them show it as part of a council meeting. Okay. I just thought it was a great. We all we all thought that was a good idea. Um, and I wanted to note your excellent capturing on page three, uh, sort of in the middle of process question about how we can work on the draft while um, uh, adhering to open meeting law by working in pairs. I thought that was a, a really important point. And we just demonstrated that with this uh, edits that we did with to the consensus outline. Um, any other comments? things you want to note that we said that were important okay so um, i'm going to call unfortunately i think we have to do by names uh for approval of the minutes is there an, a motion to approve the minutes i move we approve the minutes from october 1st holly moves to approve a second i second john seconds uh all i guess do i have to call everybody's name or okay kathy shane yes John Bensky? Yes. John Page? Yes. Ruth Larson? Holly Bowser? Yes. So, and Meg Gage, yes. So it's a unanimous approval of the minutes. Yay. So, um, Kathy, can we hand it over to you to uh, take us through the memo or the outline? <laughs> and I, I guess I want to first of all thank almost everybody for contributing to this in some way, but particularly John and Kathy, um, but John Fenske also made a contribution. I did and John Page did, so go team. So can Kathy, can we hand this over to you? Uh, sure. Um, so I have a question on the handout. Do, do, how do people, well, first I'll explain what you're seeing in this ver version two. Um, John Page went through, as he promised he would, um, to give us more of a, introduction you know what what got us to this point as well as to outline what the goals are and to posit the three things we're laying out as three strategies um, to note that they're complementary they're not meant to be one versus the other but they support they're mutually supportive with a focus on one and then john fenske and john mckay both sent me um to varying extents either new words to just drop in or uh, notes that I then 
uh, got permission to turn into bullets. Um, Meg also sent me a section, uh, as she had said to us, she would on schools. And I thought we should, before we put it into this, we should talk about it more. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of this as kind of a working outline because it's, you use the word consensus document, Meg. I really think, you know, at some point we'll, it will be a consensus document, hopefully, that we're all endorsing. But I think what we're trying to do is each item we should focus on as we put it into this document. Are we really all in agreement on this? Is right. there any, you know, so before putting it in, I think it's important to have some level of discussion, you know, not dis, you know, it's not a voting. So I just held that one piece out. So what you have. Kathy, can I interrupt? I also sent you a, a a somewhat modest rewrite of the pilot part. And there was a, a sentence that I felt was an important addition. Okay, well, I'm, what I'm about to ask is how do people, how would people like to go through this? We could start with the new piece that Meg sent and put it up on the screen and have a discussion about it because it is not in the, the longer document. And I think that to me, that might make sense. Um, I, when Meg sent it to me, I sent her a list of questions I had um, and I still, you know, I will look at the rewrite, but, you know, questions before I thought it would be, uh, that I thought it would be better to discuss as a group, you know, so we had no discussion about my questions. I just sent questions. Right. Yeah, Liz? Can I suggest that first we put the document that you're talking about up on the screen so we're all making sure we're looking at the same version of it. Okay. Um, and okay. then... For me, when I printed it out, I hope I printed out the one we're gonna be talking about. Um, I just went through it page by page and I think in some ways it would be easier to just go through it page by page than to by sections, which we then will plug in to different things. Okay. So, okay, so it's already wanna... organized and it's in a, an organized way and I think it would help structure our conversation if we go through it page by page. I, I think that's fine. And I guess my, one of my questions, Meg just put it up in track changes. Do you wanna see it that way? Or um, do you wanna see it? I think I sent a clean version and also- I would prefer it if you, we could send the cleaner version of it. Okay. That way you won't see the changes, so that's okay. I can do that. But the clean version is after these track changes. It's included, yep. in fact, yeah, because people would rather see the clean version. I think it's easier, you know, people can go. Sure. I mean, it, you know, particularly the reason I thought clean made sense um, was John uh, moved whole sections around. So it looks like there was a lot of writing on it in some instances where it really was just moving a whole paragraph to another place. Right. I'm just getting it here now. Can I also suggest that whoever is doing the, if only Meg can share screen, um, if we're going to be making changes in it, do we want the person who's sharing the screen to be making those changes? Because I, I, can, I can share the screen and do it right now. E okay. Either way, the share well, screen. Yeah. I'm going to share it and I'll, I'm just trying to, either any of us can share the screen, Liz. But let's have I'm one person do it. Kathy, okay. do you want to do it? And then I have a question. Just, John? A question for uh, Kathy. Um, <clears throat> is the idea that uh, Meg's separate section on schools is conceptually, it's like the, like the three parts, A, B, and C, and there'll be a fourth part? Um, and could no. you just tell me how does, how does her document relate to your draft document? Okay, she, what the, the way Meg sent it in, um, is that we talk in the first section of strategy A about that this could start with a pilot. So she was providing an idea for a pilot. So it wouldn't be a new section, but just here's a different kind of pilot we could be thinking about. Um, so it would be dropped into that rather than a whole, but we can come back to that structurally, I think. Just for the sake of, I can show it to you if you want, but we'll, when we get to it, let's do it then. Okay, let me figure out how I share a screen. What I decided was, um, I'm gonna get, that it was, instead of a separate section, it was a variation on the pilot project. Is my screen showing now to everyone? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it would drop into the strategy A goes through using these various sources and said we could start with a pilot. 
and talks a little bit about up what the pilot might look like and Meg was going to drop it into that section. Okay, uh, so I have it. Also I have it, the pilot section some. Okay, at this point, I have it on the screen. Good. On page one. <laughs> So the very first thing way down at the bottom of page one in the first footnote, my name is wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm wrong. Wow, it's a whole different name. Yes. No, it's, and I'll just... it is Larson, but it's not Lisa. Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> I have a question about um, in the executive summary point B. Uh, we have right now we have including non-binding referendums uh, other than an override. Is there such a thing as a binding referendum for towns and cities? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is something John John put in, John Page put in. Um, I think, yeah, I think I put in non-binding question mark um, yeah. with the, um, not as a final, not as a final thing, but just as a question, when we say referendums, do we mean binding uh, as in, as like you said, John overrides, or do we mean? So I, I, what I would recommend is, I would recommend adding opinion surveys and striking non-binding. In other words, it would read including opinion surveys and referendums. How do we feel about referenda? Referenda. I like that. Me too. I think um, well, I, I support what John just said about the opinion surveys, especially because they're cheaper. Um, while we're on item B, I just, this is just a clarification thing. I devise more effective ways to what, of what? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to uh, get public input. Okay. No, well, that's, it? that's at the end to solicit public priorities. That's what it is. Okay, to, so, okay, to solicit public priorities, to solicit public Advisable. priorities yeah. i agree liz it's the sentence structure is horrible <laughs> yeah and then at the end you do and, not, and i'm removing this part yes i i have to say kathy most of the notes i've got here are more like editorial and proofreading than content so the other thing is up where it says each represents a strategy to augment participation um i would like to add current participation because we do have a little bit so what we're really trying to do is get more people to participate. Done. Great. And as you can see, it's, it's although this is clean, um, as I type these in, they're going in and track changes so we can see what we've done. Good. And final sex, uh, sentence, we then briefly discuss thoughts on actions on ideas for actions on, oh, that's, never mind, it's already been fixed. Okay. Um, I'll just note that at least for my additions, I know I tried to capture concepts, but I did not review for how they fit grammatically or uh, definitely view this as a draft. So I know we'll probably get to that in a minute and realize that there's probably well, things to change. In once, one suggestion I have for this, I mean, we can go through this however people want, is um, at the point we're on, um, what does Mandy call them, Scrivener, and I always will misspell that particular term, but where it's typos, uh, we've got the wrong verb tense, uh, something like the, the subject of the sentence is at the end, so it's a German construction and we'd rather have it <laughs> know what we're talking about at the beginning. Um, it might be, you know, if we're at a point that we're really doing that kind of edit, someone could go through it really carefully. Um, so that we don't have to have a six person do that. And, you know, we can decide whenever we want to do that. I, I think these comments are great. So um, it's what editors used to do to me where they couldn't stand how many often I use the same word, for example, <laughs> you know, vary the word. word. But so where, is there anything more on page one? Well, um... 
I don't know, maybe we just covered this, but that last sentence above background, it repeats, it's got thoughts on actions, on ideas for actions on, so it should read, discuss thoughts on ideas around strategies B and C, something like that. Or thoughts on actions for strategies B and C. So show me what, exactly where it is under background. Just above background, the okay. last sentence. We then briefly discuss. Oh, I see. There are too many words, actions. Yeah, it's got ac actions is repeated. Something like that. Action, uh, actions and ideas. Sorry. I can't get it to not type and. You're doing great. No, no, I'm just, uh, the cap key was stuck on. Oh, here we go. Okay, one other very minor thing down where uh, in the footnote, okay. we've got uh, John Page deserves a close parenthesis after yep. vice chair. Yeah, not so with that we're all vice chairs. Okay. <laughs> You know, and this we can we can do this kind of cleaning up later also. But John nicely plunked in a whole chart showing all of us later, so we can decide whether we want to keep this end note or not at some point. You know, I'm I I I did it. Yeah. Okay. So just one note on um, the next sections. John is uh, put in. Um, a citation to a document that Mandy Joe had drafted and we did get a copy of that. So I think if we figure out a way that we can place it somewhere, we can do a hot link to it um, the way you, and then Mandy's document I noticed refers to Gaventa and various types of things. I personally um, wanna know the source notes on things when they're re referenced that much. So I'm assuming that Mandy's documents actually has the full citation of each of those. So we can we can do something later to just, I don't wanna put them all in our, our memo, um, but we can do see, you know, uh, see hot link also for the sources cited, you know, if, if that's true about her document. Um, it's, I'm happy. I have I have her original document because she wrote it for the Charter Commission, and I'm happy to send it to everyone to look at to see the citation. I think you, I, you know, Meg. I think you provide you gave that to us. Oh, good. I think that was one of the early attached files. It's not so much I wanted to see it. I just wanted to have it someplace that if we do a hot link to it, the person reading this can find it. Okay. Do you want me to check with her? Um, well, if it's Let's, let's, let me, I can rephrase this a little bit. If we make it part of our packet for today, if you have Holly posted, the hot link can be directly to our packet. Good. So we won't have to try to figure out where it currently resides. We can just include it. Good. So okay. I wanted to say something about the substance of this. Okay. Um, is, uh, I think um, there are some ideas in here about meaningful participation that we haven't discussed as fully as I would like, particularly uh, in the second paragraph, the, the uh, highlighting decision-making in terms of participation. Um, so I'll just draw attention to that as something we might wanna talk about these ideas um, that are in this section. I guess um, my, I think that would be good. And I think if we are not going to propose anything that specifically addresses them, we could say something that this was a very rich memo. What we're proposing only addresses some, not all. You know, right. so we can come back to it that we haven't done everything that was outlined here. Um, right. but, we, but also to, I think even if we can envision a, recommending a, pr a program that actually has resident decision-making it doesn't mean we don't hold that up as a standard or a, a component of meaningful participation. I, th I think let's maybe make that a topic for the next meeting yeah. because the That's places, 
The places that have participatory budget, what I've seen them have done is carve out a very small piece of their budget and allow citizens to make some decisions over those. So none of them invited them in for the full, you know, help us decide every piece. So I, I think we should be talking about it um, um, more, fully, more fully. Not, right. I'm just, I'm not asking, that's all I'm asking. I'm suggesting yeah. that we talk about it again. And I put it as a note for our next meeting. Okay. And I certainly don't think residents can make decisions about everything. It's just we, them encouraging us to discuss um, what we think about decision making as an element of some kind of participation. Okay. Related to that, um, I think I, I this is a lot from Mandy Joe's actually quite lengthy memo, but I was trying to set the stage, and I think Meg, you might be able to add uh, very well to it. Is how do we set the stage that the part of participatory budgeting was that during the Charter Commission's work, trying to find ways for the public to be involved in decision making. So I don't know if I transitioned that, but I was trying to make it broad and then narrow it down to, and we are PBC and here's what we researched and found. Um, so I think it might need a little more shaping, but that was kind of the idea from yeah. general to, and one of those strategies is participatory budgeting. I, I, I thought you did it well. Me too. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, it made me want to join the committee that would be studying this, John. <laughs> No, I thought it, my main point is I'm happy to see it here. And uh, you did it really well. And I'm just, we all, if everyone agrees, we'll dig into this a little at our next meeting, this topic. Sounds good. Any, any other comments on this before we? No, now the, on, the only thing I thought of when I saw this, a nice little chart dropped in, okay. is Holly is in fact our, um, town uh the, finance director doesn't me yep um so it yeah you know you are you are the finance director designee so we we appointed she's called ex officio here so i've been just wondering if we should just say um finance you know designee for finance or something you know it makes it look like we, we're missing one of the people that the charter said should be on it right so I can type right into this. What do we, what, what are, you're the finance, uh, the uh, I like finance, that. finance designee. Yeah. Actually, can we put that over where you, you've got Kathy comma town counselor, can it be Holly comma? Yeah, I think the date should just be the date as well. And then if you wanted to. Put her title by her name. Oh, got it. Because often ex officio means not voting. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I right, thought which is what I understood in the beginning, but it's not a uh, voter. Yeah. You're an equal voter. <laughs> Decision maker. Okay, so you were appointed when Ed, we'll find that date, right? Probably yeah. right at the beginning. I I haven't been working on this for close to a millennium and a half. <laughs> no, this is just this is just the appointment. There's a, a one well, none, none of us. We, John makes it clear that well, we were kind of appointed, but we didn't meet until September, right? <laughs> right, but no, there's a one missing in his date of 2019. Oh, that's oh, what he's saying. Uh, <laughs> 209. <laughs> uh, there we go. It's an old person, John. <laughs> Got it. Okay, yep. fixed. Should we shall we keep going? Yep. Well, no, on my John Fenske's date. Yeah, and why am I June third? How come I showed up? I don't remember doing anything before. I didn't I... do anything to this, so um. This is downloaded, I believe, from the town's from the website, website. So it could be Boy. that there's there are typos. There's typos in there. It's possible that it, I believe this came from the town's website, right, John? It did. So yeah. actually, if we if we notice something, we can we should mark so, it down. I'm going to put a question mark because you couldn't have been appointed before the rest of us were. Right. It was a, I'm sure it was the same day, the same time. I remember my interview was right after yours, John, because I you came out and I went in. I'm just going to put a question mark so we can come back to it and find it out. How are we going to find out if it's just a mistake? 
Well, a letter went out. Um, someone will someone will know. Um, okay. Meaning, you know, Angela sends Angela out. Angela can review those. Yep. You no, know, it's it's. I'm happy to appoint you. We all got an appointment letter. You want me to ask Angela? Sure, if you want to. Sure, might as well have an answer. Okay. And we could also make this super simple and just delete that column. I think, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that the dates are relevant to really, the dates really are relevant. much there. So I, I'm fine with that as well. Okay, I will, I will come back and delete, delete it. If you watch me try to delete this right now, it might make a mess of it. So formatting, yeah. We will not ask Angela. Okay. Great. Um, it will let me delete column. Delete column. Okay, go. It's gone. Yeah, and then I think that if you're going to put that chart in there, that you can get rid of the footnote on page one. I don't think it needs to be on both pages. It's right. somewhat redundant, but one way or the other, I'm fine. Okay, so we'll make that decision after we take we another should, look at it. So if you're going to do that, then you should put the um, Meg Gage as chair and John Page as vice chair on this chart. Yeah, oh, so good. And then do that. I know they're nitpicky, I'm sorry. Mm. That's what we're doing. And I'm going to just make a note. I'm going to vice chair. Um, I'll come back and do Meg's yep. name first. So it says chair, vice chair, you know, um, and delete the other thing. Okie dokes. Okay, hold it. I, I have a point about what is participatory budgeting. This is just a, kind of a, a marker for when we get to section B, which came out of uh, my my notes on this subject, it's that um, I have no disagreement. I mean, this is exactly what participatory budgeting looks like in the, uh, the, the towns we've talked to, and it's the way the participatory budgeting project defines it. However, decide how to spend real power over real money um, is not exactly what's going on when you survey or have a non-binding referendum. Uh, you're, what you're doing there, I think, is you're giving the elected representatives uh, better information, essentially. So it's just, just uh, to flag it. I'm not saying I disagree with this. I'm just saying if we stick with this strictly, then Part B really shouldn't be part of this project. So maybe um, I, I struggled with this. John nicely dropped this in, and I wanted to, I didn't want to change too many words. Um, uh, the the process formerly known as participatory budgeting defines it the following, but there are other ways to solicit participation as, so I had the formal process known as, so it might be we want to qualify it if we want to keep strategy B in. You know, this is one specific way of participating. There are others of getting more and we um, have proposals around them. So we could have a we could have a um, note uh, drop in a sentence somewhere. I, I agree with you. The others aren't don't meet this kind of definition. But Kathy, yep. It seems though that this section with the reference to the his, you know Puerto Alegre is more about what participatory budgeting typically means. You know when the uh, we can separate. I mean we're not proposing this because of all the discussions that we've had about needing to pull back from because of COVID. Right. I know I'm agreeing with you, Meg. So I just think this needs a, it says, what is it? And then we give this formal definition that is what, when you tech, when you go to the project and you get projects, we are not proposing something that looks just like this. So I think we just need to be, um, find a transition sentence that acknowledges that. Sure. I think it's important to leave this in because we started the conversation from this point. And I think right. it's important to have the starting point and say, this is what it was. And this is how we've developed out of where we started. Right. To, to that point, I think I missed a critical sentence, which I was hoping to put in, which is the participatory budgeting project, which is an organization defines participatory budgeting as and then I, um, at the very beginning, we talked about how do we define participatory budgeting? And so I think we need a sentence that said, 
the Amherst Participatory Budgeting Commissioners expanded this to mean, and maybe a, a one sentence, um, right. if we can capture in that. But, and the thing is, you could also under this where it says participatory budgeting project, that may be confusing if people don't know, this is a national organization. This is not us. This is a, this is a, that there's is a national, that we could put a phrase in there, the national participatory budgeting project that um, advises municipalities defines it this way so that it isn't confusing that will somebody might think that's us right you know john has he's put this in as a hot link so if you click on the the blue you'll get there but i see what you're saying meg the national but it's a, you know this is and it also uh gives a note that this is not something we cooked up ourselves Okay. The national initiative. Organization. Okay. Or initiative, whatever. You could, I, I'm happy to, you know, that promotes participatory budgeting, comma, defines it, colon. We can work on that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and then, then John, your sentence would go. Um, we what well, was Liz said. We started with this definition. You need to initial these things, um, and then you want to put before we do something to methods we define. Would you put it right at the end of this? Then maybe right at the end that you know okay, that the say, Amherst PBC, um, and we come up with some. Okay. You know, hopefully one sentence, but maybe more that captures what we're thinking about now. Uh, yeah, how, how we built on it. Let's keep it positive. We're building on this. Right. Right. Maybe on this foundation. And maybe it's literally a foundation. Yep. Maybe this is one of the places where we introduce COVID. <laughs> no, it comes in twice later. No, I, I'll just say PB for now. Built on this fashion and developed our own definition. Definition. Interpretation. Our own interpret, our own interpretation to include uh, three strategies discussed below for now okay <laughs> we can yeah now i'm going to yellow shade it so this is our rough draft of saying something here so i think the spirit of this should be that we're not necessarily perfecting our words we're noting the places where we want to perfect exactly. our exactly yep there's nothing more horrendous than six people editing something at the same time <laughs> For, for this next section, I have a, a question kind of for all of us, which is, do we want this to be a memo on uh, what we learned or do we want it to be a report? Because I started to find myself writing a, a, a very simple science report with background, methods, conclusions, and further research. Um, but I don't know which we felt like we wanted to uh, produce and send to the council. Well, I like I liked what you did, and I just thought the word method is not quite right. It's you know history process, of how we, or... you know our process, history of of what we've done, or history of how we uh, conducted ourselves. Um, There's definitely pieces missing here that we need to add to um, this section. which actually will eventually get to our, our calendar later, but I don't wanna just derail our current focus. I do think process is a better description for it, but I, I wish I could say, let's, let's do 
the I think a hybrid of what you've come up with, <laughs> the report slash memo. It's so we do want people to know that we did due diligence. Um, we did it in a logical way. Wasn't just going into a room and throwing stuff up on a wall. So what sticks? Um, but the meat of the matter is here's what we found out. Right. It's, rather than here's how we found it out, we want to really get more to here's what we found out. Right. In, <clears throat> excuse me, in the second paragraph, uh, Greensboro is misspelled. It's like Marlboro without the UG at the end. <laughs> I mean, Marlboro in mass, not, not the cigarette. Yeah. Or, the cigarette is, is like that too, I guess. I don't know. It is. <laughs> Do you know that there are actually, is it Marlboro? I believe there's actually two Marlboros in Massachusetts, one with the O U G H and one with just the O. Really? Or there's a, some wow. city Thank or some you. town in Massachusetts that has two with the same name. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> seen Westboro spelled both ways. I've seen Attleboro spelled both ways. So did we, did we directly talk to anyone beyond Cambridge and Greensboro? I know. Nice and deep. I, I don't remember talking to Cambridge. I don't remember talking to Cambridge either. No, we didn't talk to deep. We talked Meg. to Meg in Canada. John and I talked with a couple Megan. of groups and reported back to you like Greensboro. Sean, right. And um, I, I can look at my notes, but we talked to several others. We decided not to talk to Cambridge because people felt they were so big. Um, I, I think we would have learned something, but we didn't have that conversation because people felt they were, the whole scale was so different. And we'll put the, we'll just come back and do this. So we did, yeah. well, or tell me now, which was the can, Canadian town name? Um, Deep. D-I-E-P-P-E. -P -P -E. Yeah, Deep. And I'll, I'll look up the other ones, Kathy. I just. Uh, okay. Because John and I talked to at least two Deep and. Uh, no, but that, I think it's important that if we are going to include who we talk to, that yeah. the Greensboro and the one in Canada were group meetings. The others were um, not everybody participated in those. So we could just um, say members of our all or yeah. members of our commission met with the following or something. Okay. Okay, I'm just putting names to come. Yeah. And I wrote and I wrote up the Kingston one, so it's, that's the only reason one I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Kingston was one. Right, but we didn't talk directly to Kingston. We we were trying to, and that didn't work. That was one of those uh, tech. But the, yeah, but we still yeah right. We have a write up. Mm -hmm. So I, so um, John wrote engaging stakeholders, you know, we, we'll know what we actually, this section is going to get revised once we get to a more complete. If we've done it, we would say we then, you know, once we came up with ideas, we then talk to um, whomever, right? Because right. we haven't done that yet. So I think it was right to just put it in yellow. <laughs> right. Since your curse is right there, it was actually October 2020 that Angela told you us about the CPO. It was October 1st, but it was still October. It was. I totally <laughs> forgot that. It's been a long month. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah. Almost over. I really like to know what it is that we've got coming up. I'm so glad. <laughs> We've done that already. <laughs> I just wrote. Well, last time we last time when we reviewed draft one, um, we said um, 
to refine a little bit later about how we might do this. We're going to have to talk to somebody um, from Community Preservation Act, you know, send a couple of us to literally talk to them, the CDBG, and uh, get Paul's thoughts and reactions to the capital um, piece, because we have to at least know that they, they think we're completely crazy or they think there's a potential way to do something. Um, but so I put it, then we met with them. You're right, Liz, I just said, so we're going to do that. John had said, are we going to do it? And I said, well, we're gonna, we said we're gonna do it. So we're gonna have to do it because we just, it can't come as a shock to these entities that we're thinking about them. And Meg, you've always said we're going to do something like a public forum, right? Um, yeah, and I, I actually have it. Hopefully, we're going to get to talk about our timeline at this meeting a little bit so that we can start to see if we want to, for example, roust up the League of Women Voters or something like that. I think in Amherst, to talk about participation and not have any forum would be a little bit yeah. <laughs> odd. All right, you just tell me what you want, where you want me to go next. Just to carry on, I think. Anyone, that, oh. any comments on page two, anybody? That was page three we just did. Oh, right, sorry, got to read my own okay. page. <laughs> That's right, if there were no, so we have this, then we had, and then we threw out da da da, we said something about the pandemic. Um, excuse me, in, um, this paragraph that begins throughout, yeah. uh, there's an extra the in the third line after the word strategies stra or strategies that we have developed. The recommended strategies that we have developed. Thank you. Great. Anything else on page three? We're now on page four. Okay, page four. Okay. In, my in that, uh, going back to the throughout paragraph, the last sentence has the word. It's a little. It's wordy. Look to the future. A foundation for the future. For future I think action. It I'm just. I, m m let's take a. I thought I should break that sentence up. We also. Okay. Oh. Yeah, then the word future is repeated. Oh, so in, this is page three. Oh, well. Yep. Page three. Okay. Yeah, good. So right there, since you're there, um, right above in the first sentence, it, I believe it should be imposed on Amherst since we're there. Yep. <clears throat> So my feeling is that we should pull the pandemic out and not just have it as the second part of a paragraph about forums. There's a- I, the, I did, I, it's now its own paragraph. Okay, good, sorry, I'm still looking at my, okay, sorry, I've got to look up, yeah. Yeah, I, you're right, Meg, I realized it was like a lead sentence. I just did a, a space and throughout starts its own new paragraph now. Right, because it's a, it's a big deal. It totally changes everything. <laughs> I think several of us made that comment at the last meeting. I think it was three different times in the minutes it was somebody said that. And the idea that we have a whole winter to get through is pretty horrendous, but we'll do it. We could add a subtitle or something. Um, it might be a little unusual, just a single paragraph, but. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, 
once we get this draft done, we may want to rearrange it so that it flows differently. But yep. for now, I think that's a very tight paragraph. Yeah. So let's. Yep. So conclusion. Um, my question is, the sentence that says, we recommend three strategies. Are we recommending three strategies or are we recommending a three-pronged strategy? Ooh, ooh, I like that. Me too. So no, I mean, this is my question for discussion. Um, I, so I have one strategy uh, with three prongs or three different strategies. John? Well, just, um, I, this is the first time I've focused on this issue, but I like the idea of a unified strategy because I think of what we're doing as trying to fulfill in a slightly expanded way the mandate from the Charter Commission, which is to enhance and increase citizen participation. In the budget, yeah. Right, specifically with respect to the budget. I like, I, I like it a lot because, well, A, conclusion, we could say recommendations, and we could just repeat, we recommend a three-pronged strategy to enhance participation in the Amherst budget process. I mean, it repletes the lead line, but it's... That's okay. Yeah. Well, now, now we have the word strategies in the in the title and strategy. I'm going to change this right now. Yeah. Three pronged. Strategy. You can just say that there and delete the first sentence. Yeah. Delete that first. We recommend a three pronged strategy to enhance. I just wanted to have a recommendation somewhere. So I'll just do it this way instead of conclusion. Well, or the conclusion is the committee recommends a three-pronged strategy, blah, blah. I like having that the committee recommends. I like that language because it says that we all work okay, together. Here we go. Okay. The no bold. The committee, and it's the wrong typeface because someone had, uh, this is. Area. No, up, up, up there it would say conclusion. The committee recommends a three-pronged. Oh, conclusion. Yeah. It, it sort of fits with our, you know, background mm -hmm. process uh -huh. conclusion. Right. I mean, I, I like that go. kind of format. Okay. Does that get it? I like it. Everybody's nodding. Okay, I, we're just, fortunately this is a short memo. Yeah, well, <laughs> we can be done by the end of the day, right? <laughs> it's pretty funny if we were done by December 1st after all. <laughs> no, we, cause we have to, we have I our mean. Public, yes. No, I think, I mean, I think that we met with, I think it's really important to get each of these entities to react, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. It was a joke. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we might be done with our initial draft. <laughs> I'm going to too. Okay. A. So now this is pretty much unchanged from what you saw before. Um, I think John, I, I don't have the marked up version, but he caught some typos and. He added due to COVID. Yeah, I did. I think I did that, but you know, I, I, I put COVID in more than once because. Um, I would like to move up um, in the, under the first bullets. I would like staffing to be the first bullet and to combine the staff support to flesh out and staff support for voting, make one important bullet because that is key. You know, we can't do anything without staff support. So, you know, even if we only have 10 bucks, if we don't have the staff support for it. Um, so I would like to just rearrange 
okay. and really highlight how important it is to have. I'm going to just type it in right now here and then fix it. Staff support to push out proposals. Yeah, and then, you know, we can reword that, but just put those two items together and kick them to the front, to the top. So on, on this on this point, I have a question, conceptual question. Um, is um, I I forget if it's stated clearly elsewhere. Are we recommending uh, as well that this commission go out of existence and what remains of the momentum for participatory budgeting be in the hands of the council and whatever staff are devoted to it? Is that the idea? That that is, there's no commission, no no citizen volunteers like ourselves who are doing bits of work, uh, keeping things going. That's a really, I think that's an extremely important point we might want to talk about. Um, um, it was my understanding that the commission was to look at how this would work, but not to actually design the project, Right. to just do the structure of it. So if we do want to include that, um, that would be something to add mm -hmm. in the, the uh, implementation. I think Liz is right that we have a term and it ends and we've just gotten it extended, but I don't think we have the option of extending it without the council agreeing. But John's suggesting also proposing that there be some, or asking, not necessarily proposing, some uh, ongoing other committee possibly that would uh, shepherd this along. Well, I'm, I'm thinking ahead as well to the, what I put into section B, and I'm very leery of, uh, you know, inventing new tasks for people who already have full jobs. You know, right. and the community participation officers, for example, we might expect them to come up with, I don't know, surveys and, uh, you know, uh, referenda and so forth, but, uh, and, or the town council, we might expect them to do that, but they, they already have their plates full. Right. And in a way, I think it'd be great if you had a, a small uh, group of people who were working on, let's call it, uh, I don't know, the, the spade work or the busy work, and then turned it over half prepared to the community participation officers or the council. And they're the ones who actually implement things. But uh, I don't know, just uh, some half-baked ideas I had on this. I like that thinking. Is this something we wanna raise up to talk about at another meeting? So in other words, we're editing here and when we identify things that need more discussion, we'll pull them out. Is this one I, of those? I think I need more discussion, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I but just to... I'm just keeping track here. Our next meeting agenda is forming. <laughs> <laughs> um I might be a little early on this, but one thing which I didn't add, but it could take some time to do is when we, we eventually reference CPA and CDBG, we also talk about the capital budget um, versus the operating. Should we in the shortest way possible explain how those work? Um, I'm not an expert in it, but we probably should write how those work um, prior to giving recommendations. I'm not sure. Um, one thing we might do. Because if I was a CPA member, I might react and say, what do you know about CPA? But if we identify, you know, we acknowledge how it works right now, here are our recommendations. Perhaps a way to do this without making this more dense is to create an appendix. Yeah. See, a, you know, a, Appendix A for a description of how these now work. Yeah. You know, I did that a bit, John, in the memo that I did last March, and I can expand on it and vet it to make sure um, I'm chair of JCPC, so I can probably make that accurate by myself, but I can work with Holly to make sure we've got all of these done. But I think, you know, we could just say process included, and then we can say Appendix A includes a description of how these currently work. that and maybe any legal um, limitations. For example, yep. we could recommend that every process be um, fully democratic, done by referenda, but um, some of these processes can't happen that way. 
Right. right. Um, so I think the Appendix A would have to do that. So like right now, um, I do a little bit of that later, or we do a little bit of that later in this memo, but uh, even the council doesn't directly decide the elements of the capital proposal altogether. You know, it's in the town manager's hand and Jay's, yes. So, you know, CPAC is a particular thing with an entity that governs it. So we should describe not just current, but like what what's the legal current way it operates. Yeah. Um, just a little note, we could also include in that uh, kind of a summary of that spreadsheet that May could put together, just and then reference that to like back where we say, this is who we talk to, see appendix XYZ or whatever appendix it is. Okay. Um, Another thing in the appendix could be um, a little more background on the commission so that the charter commission, I don't know if we want to, history of I, I, I don't I wouldn't put I would I think we just need to do things that avoid making this a long read yeah that okay. are there for a reader to understand what we're talking about um I guess okay so we've got we just noticed 430 yeah so let's keep plugging along here this is excellent I just under the sufficient where did it go now? Sufficient budgeting. I just need to clarify that. I don't, I think John already addressed that. Um, I didn't understand that part. Wait, where, where are you? Back up on, it's page four, the sufficient budget to engage and then the one-time expense capital versus ongoing operating budget. I think John, you already addressed that. So I just, I wasn't too sure what the, point we were trying to make was. Um, well, I, what I meant when I wrote this, was <laughs> what, I, what I thought we heard when we were talking to people and then reading about it, is they had to put enough money on the table that someone thought it was worth proposing something. And most of them restricted it to one time capital expenses. And then until we got to um, Kingston actually figured out a way that you could do something that ultimately became part of the operating budget. Uh, but the others were quite restrictive. Um, you know, so that was this one time summer program of internships. So, okay, I think yeah. maybe that could be explained a little bit better it just just up it, it doesn't need to be the separate bullet mini bullet point are those bullet points i don't know whatever um yeah i i just okay now i understand what the, those were i i don't know right now how to you can just highlight it so we can that. think on how that because yeah. i understand yeah, what you're saying i mean i'm a little uh, now that we rehashed it, I'm understanding, but when I read it the first time that you mentioned it, I, I was a little bit confused as well. It's really the first bullet um, versus projects that would have ongoing operating expenses, maybe. I don't. Yeah. Okay. You know, so none of well, them, I guess the example I, I would be none I'm of them. Everyone. Said, I think the first part of that bullet Okay. Sorry, Kathy, I cut you off. Okay, go on, John. I, I just, you know, it's, it's, this is as opposed to we need another um, police officer, we need another firefighter. Right. Um, That's a, we want library I, 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 benefits. Uh, yeah. Right. Your last bullet under staff, I think, captures the first sentence, maybe in this bullet um, support to publicize outreach. Yeah, I just Liz Liz suggested uh, move all staff, so I just didn't. It, it's a duplicate, right? I see. Yeah, I moved all the staff things up. up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now it's the staff support to flesh out proposals. No, the, but the first part of the highlighted one. Oh. Do we feel like that's budget, captured so in staff, and then? No, I think I think what that means is I the amount uh, at, at at play 
needs to right. be sufficient to make people interested in it, oh. not to have a sufficient mm -hmm. budget to pay mm -hmm. for the staff right, to do right, it. Right. But uh -oh. yeah, I, yep. yeah, now I see that. Okay, so. So it- I see how I was public. misinterpreting too. So we'll have to think on wording on that. Maybe that's something we can work on. Okay, either John Fenske or John McCabe, I can't remember the last time said, I see this as a lure. We put some money on the table to bring some people in. Yeah. <laughs> So it's so sufficient budget to attract the public to propose or, you know, or in to incentivize the public to come up with proposals or that's what you're, yeah, right. Okay. Entice. So uh, who's going to work on that language? Yeah. I like entice. Okay. To to make proposals, right? Let's pause a moment here and reflect on where we are in our meeting. We have ideally we said we were going to stop it after an hour and a half. We have 25 minutes. Let me just check uh, do a time check on uh, should we continue with this and see how far we get? Shall we come back to this at our next meeting? I just want to give. Do you I have, so I have a question on how much we can do, and Holly may be more of a, is likely more of an expert than I am. Um, with things that are wordsmithing, better wording, could each person drop theirs in or make a comment and then? share it with us like we're doing now to uh me we did this i'm trying to think of we did it once you know send their things just to meg but what what we did once with the council is lynn did a very i thought painful process on her end and she copied and pasted everybody's common into one document <laughs> you know, this isn't clear to me, needs to be fixed or something. So only one person was seeing all the comments and no decisions were being made. Literally all the comments were put in. Um, Cause I think these, you know, this isn't clear to me, we need to refix it. Um, might be a way to, uh, I'm not saying we stop right now on page four. We have three more page, we have a bunch more pages. So we could say we stopped here well, this maybe we want to go a little further. I didn't know yeah. if this was the right stopping place, but I, I'm noticing. Um, I'd be happy to do that. It's a little. It's hard to imagine that um, sending edits and comments is constitutes violating open meeting law. But if we think it's better, I'd be happy to get. If we all see, if we all see each other's, it seems to be a violation. If one person takes five comments and puts drops them in without making changes. I mean, I just think it's, we can just, I just, it was really useful when we were doing something else and it enabled us next time to just go through and make decisions, but. Well, I'd be happy to do that if that would be, I just want to be basically a decider what, how are we going to spend the rest of this meeting and how are we yeah. going to do this? I'm happy to do what you described. If people got their comments to me by um, a week from today, say, and I'd, take Friday, Saturday, and I, well, no, it has to be sooner than that, because to get them to you, Kathy. Um, no, I'm saying that I don't get to see everybody's. Um, you know, it's, if either everyone sends them to me, <laughs> and I produce a consolidator, everyone send, so then we're working through a, a very messy, marked up thing with little comment bubbles, you know, so I don't think. So, Kathy, what do you think would be the well, I don't know enough. Liz said she had marked up throughout, um, you know, small and large, you know, edits and some of the things we're hitting. So I, I just need a sense of the group. I'm perfectly happy to just keep going and see how far we get. And then say so we got to the end of whatever page and continue, you know, we're making changes as we go along and it's getting, a, you know, it's in track change mode. So I was just 
I don't know how much more is, to, what I'm asking is how much more does everybody have? And uh, are there some big things we should jump to or are there are lots of small things and we should just keep going the way we're going? Can we, I've got like one big thing that I've got a question on and can we just all just, there's also some typos in it. And if we just say, we're not gonna deal with typos right now. Okay. Um, but I agree. kind of the con concepts. Yeah. Kathy, so, are you willing to receive those or sh let's just agree on who's yeah, going to worry about typos right now. How about we get the and concepts down and then we'll have one person who will be the proofreader and okay. we'll go through and get rid of the typos. Okay, and I will hand that over to you, Liz. I'm terrible at seeing my own typos. And I did do a spell check. I did, you know, so they're, they're, they're the kind that slipped by me. So what are the big, let's do the big things. Um, so I think that this is this is pretty productive, and I um, I mean we the other thing too is we did move the time of the meeting up to three thirty so that we could do two hour meetings. I don't know if anybody objects to that today personally, um, but the other items left on the agenda are well the timeline might be a little bit time consuming, but you know confirming a next meeting and talking about meeting and public comment should be pretty short so i think we should keep going if everybody's okay. willing i also don't think we can decide on a timeline until we have a document that we can present <laughs> right. right um okay do we want to go till 5 30. i can do it i can do it i can do it i can do okay. it i'll Let's probably so do have to cut out at 5 15 oh. but yeah okay do Let's people agree with um, holly's proposal that we just keep going yep mm -hmm. okay and that uh Liz is and typos and grammar can be emailed Perfect. after. Okay. I'm ready. Let's Just tell me where right. to go. Onward. Uh, so I, on page five, really, all I had were a lot of kind of typos and language clarification, which we can deal with later. But the one that I had the big question of, and maybe this was because I was in my car on a phone rather than in an actual meeting. The pilot program, I don't really understand what that is because to me, everything that comes before is here's the three-pronged strategy to work with what we've got. And then this is kind of like, oh, and here's another little idea that we have, but doesn't seem to fit into the three-pronged recommendation. So I guess I need a little clarity on what that is. Okay, um, I wrote this, so let me tell you what I was thinking about when I wrote it. Um, I thought if we couldn't carve out, for whatever reasons, a pot of money out of each of these sources, or maybe this isn't even a pilot, if we thought we could get up to a certain amount from each source, the residents would not need to know which source could potentially fund their, their project idea, so we could say, projects could be considered in any of these categories. And some of them might be CPA categories, might, some of them might be CDBG categories, some might be just straight capital. And we would put up a small amount of money rather than 50 out of each of them, 50 total, to see what kinds of ideas people came up with. And then at the staff level, um, they would say, well, this can't be funded by CPAC, but it could be funded by CDBG, or it could be funded, it's a straight capital. Um, so I had a, that you wouldn't, so it is a way of, instead of, so, so, you know, so we could say there is a pot, even though there really isn't a pot, it's a conceptual pot. <laughs> and we've got an agreement um, there isn't really any agreement right now on resident proposals for capital that we will fund even one of them. So, but if we got an agreement or a commitment that we would fund at least up to X dollars. So this was what my idea was that it would be invisible to you when you're proposing it, but we would list, it would have to fit into one of these. Right. And that was, that was my um, throwing that idea on a piece of paper. Um, Liz, but it wasn't okay. particularly well thought out when I did it. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm coming, I, I'm visualizing this and, and yeah. Okay, now I understand. So Kathy, this is the paragraph I rewrote, but you want me to share my screen with it or send it to everybody? 
so, so this is there's a door and then you get through the door and there are three hallways yes exactly okay and you wouldn't necessarily know the hallways i mean this would be there you wouldn't necessarily know the hallways you wouldn't but, have to know the hallway before you go through the door right okay so translate that into real english <laughs> right uh right, right. So Meg, so your, yours was adding schools to this. No, the first paragraph was rewriting what you wrote on the pilots. Okay, we'll share your screen. Okay, I think you have to unshare. I do? Okay. I don't think I can share. I think we're all equal. Okay. You have to go to the top at the green and unshare. You are share, screen sharing, stop share. Now mine is red. But there we go. So now I'll share mine. I think maybe it's the word pilot because to me a pilot is something that's new. So this part so, is just on the rewrite of the pilot. Yeah. But pilot usually means a, a small scale version of something. Right, but it's a small scale, but yeah. So the key things that I wanted to add are this idea of could be used to develop procedures and infrastructure for a full program down the road. Uh, so that we, because, um, and this, it, well, I'll let you read it. Then the sec, then I decided rather than writing a separate section on schools, that that could be a sub, a, a category of a pilot project rather than a whole new, it didn't fit with the memo to have a whole new thing. Well, the rewrite of the first paragraph still kind of says the same thing, except right. for the first sentence. You know, Liz's notion of you come in one door and we figure out where where the money's coming from. Right. So I would rewrite this now based on what Liz said, but I hadn't heard that. But um, right. So here were my questions about the school. The schools that I sent to Meg. Um, the schools. So starting, let's do regional school committee. The regional school committee is. Uh, more towns than just us. Right. And um, once you have all the towns involved, they would have to vote on this amount of money. And so the question is, is it Pelham residents and uh, Shutesbury and Leverett also making proposals? That's question number one. Right. Question number two is the regional school capital budget, you know, these one-time expenditures is um, part of a budget the town council approves and each town approves their share of their budget and it's all folded in. So it wasn't clear and the capital, their capital proposals never come to JCPC, but we know what, if they have voted on it, what the impact will be on the town budget in terms of debt service. Um, so it's a weird, and they, they finance it with bonds. Secondly, my second question then was about elementary schools. Elementary school, we control the budget and they do make capital requests every year to JCPC, whether it's a bus, a bench. Um, so the one resident proposal this year we had was for uh, solar panels over the parking lots of the schools. So I wasn't sure how you can carve the schools out since the schools come through the more general budget process of the town. Right. So you made these excellent comments. You, I submit. I agree with you. So we could just delete this part here. Uh, or, but these are really two separate ideas. Right. The main thing I want to suggest here with this pilot. Which should we talk about first? I'm happy to eliminate the school thing or rewrite it to be elementary school. But it, well, I, it, it was I just, it was just, you know, I think let's just talk on the first paragraph. A pilot, um, if we do, I have no problem with this way of rewriting it. And the pilot, we might say, you know, this could include things that included the schools. Like it include, it could include a bench or a water fountain or um, a so, you know, because those are capital projects, right? So they are covered, they're not, and like CPAC, the, the regional school are coming for community fields right. because, you know, so it's, it's not that schools are not included in the above, probably they're not included in 
CDBG, but maybe right. there's something under CDBG. Right. So, um, so Liz, does Meg's rewrite, other than we do the, you know, we can, if we carve out a small amount of money and then it's the residents could propose coming through one door and the town would figure out which category it fitted in, fit into? Yeah, I, I, that rewrite works in my brain for some reason, the words. Sorry, my brain is stopping working right now. <laughs> okay, so why don't I take this first paragraph of Meg's, plug it right in and then do this, um, you know, invisible to residents or something that they, they could come through one door for a small amount of money. And the, the town staff would figure out if this is possible at all, but which pot it was coming out of. Yeah. I'm trying to find where you cross something out, but I'm going to cross this out, right? I, I think I'm, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with this because if this were to be a pilot, and, and I, the wording doesn't even matter, if this were to be some sort of program that we would want to try to work on by getting a little bit of money from CPA, a little bit of money from CDBG, and a little bit of money from JCPC, how... I guess I'm just confused on how you could even do that because CPAC has to recommend a right. project. Right. That's that's CDBG what CDBG I... has to recommend a project. So maybe instead of it's working on getting a bit of money from each of these pots, instead the initial pilot program is to when citizens come to the front door, we say, okay, you need to go down the CPAC hallway. You need to go down to help okay. direct okay. the, citizen, the re residents to where rather than, yeah, trying to get anybody. I mean, I would not, if I were on any of these committees, I would not want to say, yeah, you guys go ahead. We're going to set aside 10,000 for you. <laughs> They, right, you know, so that's what Holly's saying. It's unlikely. Well, it's probably impossible with CDBG, but right. So, but more to just commit X dollars to uh, an abstract concept <laughs> to right. be in a so, pot. <laughs> so it's more the you know the the participatory budgeting pilot program is more the the um, sorting hat of you you come in with this idea. Let us help you figure out where the best current places okay. to go look for that money or to put your proposal to. As for the schools, I think I, um, just as a parent in the schools right now, I don't want to touch them. I want to stay as far away from the school budget right now. Um, I do think this does make me realize that somewhere in here, it would be lovely to have um, working with the schools for outreach to the students to get them to feel engaged in the community too. Well, that's that was sort of the idea, but um, yeah. The ground. Okay. Like, no, just, just to say, because these are like um, in your, center, your, your proposal, it's to encourage the young people to think about how their school might be improved, but I would like them to think about how their community at large can be improved because they're residents of the community too. So not just limiting their options to what they can do for their school, but what they can do for the community. So. So do we want to, but it sounds like we are going to not have this, right? But I want to oh. put on the burn, someplace let's include engaging students, college and. Okay, I, I've got that note. And then Meg, I've got your rewritten paragraph. I'll drop it in with this changed wording after, um, Great. After that first sentence, is that a first sentence that goes all the way down to resident voting on proposals? That's one sentence, right? <laughs> um, well, one, two, that's three, a really four. long sentence. Why don't okay, I but, th but then the place where the new wording is going in, um, it would be, you know, re there, there'd be one door that residents would come with an idea and staff would help them figure out whether it, this is a CPAC, a CDBG or a JCPC um, proposal. And, um, and would help them flush it out. Yeah, I'd make that two sentences actually. That's a pretty big sentence. Okay. Oh. Okay, I got it. Stop sharing. Uh, are we going um, back, Kathy, to yours now? Okay, let's see. I was just gonna say that without, I think we found a good solution for including the schools explicitly in outreach 
Um, but we can always add a, um, not next steps, but what did I call it? Uh, maybe further research or additional research paragraph. And so maybe if there's something that at the end of our term, we don't resolve like the schools. I, I mean, I agree with Liz's and with Kathy that it's so complicated to for this group to tackle, but that doesn't mean we can't put a paragraph in that, um, you know, uh, exploring this within the school budget process, specifically in the future, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if it ever will happen, but we could always put that as like a further research opportunity or, or outstanding question. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and I'm just gonna, um, so down on outreach. It's amazing, we can all watch that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna, we'll figure out where that goes. Great. Okay. So here's where we get on very slippery grounds, the next part <laughs> in my, things might need to change. Well, they really have to change a lot. <laughs> so, you know, that each of these potential sources of money um, has a governing structure to it and a legal basis to it that doesn't easily allow a voting process by residents doesn't easily um, allow us to even us meaning the town to say a certain amount of money will up to a certain amount would always be spent on resident proposals if we get any good ones uh -huh. um, so I I kind of loosely wrote this because um, there isn't there isn't a commitment you know the, Holly knows the CPAC process uh, really well but you know, I was just really struck this year on the shortage of proposals until a few came in after the deadline. But I think, Meg, your proposal was the only one that came in. That's what I was call on the resident side, you know, as opposed to a, the town side. The town side. I'm super. And the historic commission, I think, decided it didn't qualify because they want to fund, this is a history, a interpretive history trail of the old mill sites. And uh, we need to do some research to figure out which sites and what, they said they'd be interested in funding the, so the post, the signs that indicate what was there, but not the research to figure out where the signs should go and what they should say. Well, and that's with CPAC, it's the, there's an entity beyond CPAC that says, does this fit? Then the CPAC committee says, is it, does it fit the definition of what the committee can support? So the Jones Library was a good discussion on the special collections. Um, could you support building a new room to house them? And until they moved it to the old part of the library, there was a question of the collections are historic. But can you build a building to protect them? Right. So, so each of these, so it's, it's, it's mainly, I mainly was saying, this short little section doesn't do justice to the hurdles of saying build on programs we've got. So yeah. do we make a section on implementation and here are the things that would need to happen in order. So one would be a review of bylaws and current, you know, limitations on that. Um, and well, then, yeah. yeah. It's all, and it's just the, the categories are so, and how they interpret them are so uh, narrow. Well, yeah, that's what I, yeah. that is the, you know, could building on these happen? Um, and I think this uh, past tense, if we went out and talked to various staff people and or the town attorney, will give us some answers on things that were in my mind. Would 
for example, would the count could the council do a bylaw that changes something um, that carves out money or makes some of these processes possible? I have no idea. Um, the charter is pretty explicit about how the budget will operate, including how the capital budget operates. It's and that's our town charter. Um, that's our governing law. Yeah. Um, so if you had informal agreement from the town manager that they like, he, it's a currently a he, likes this idea, and the JCPC committee like this idea, there could be a more concerted effort to make sure there's at least a resident proposal or two each year. Um, could you do voting on it? You know, so I think each of these elements we've talked about is an implementation challenge, right? Or implementation issue. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Huge. We probably need to meet with each of these groups. Okay. And I'm going to change the word might to would. <laughs> what might need to change? What would need to change? Yeah. And Holly, you know, I have no idea whether in any community um, under the, com the Preservation Act money, do any of them do something about um, vetting proposals with a broader resident group or are they all just the committee before it comes? The statute says it's the committee. I don't know if they use other means to get it to the committee for the final say. That, I mean, I don't see that as being unallowed, but the, right. the committee is the one that has to make the recommendations to the town manager. Right. I don't know of any other communities that do it in a, in a broader way. Okay, so that would be but one. I don't, but I don't see why it wouldn't be allowed. Right. Okay. And so Meg, you had- I'll check, I'll check into it. And Meg, you, had, you have emphasized throughout um, having residents vote on these in some way, so they think they influence the decision. The voting part um, is a separate hurdle. Right. Now, if we could get a commitment to fund at least a handful of these every year, we would have had a jump start on what happens now. Right. You know, one of the things I thought of that I didn't think of when we were talking about it is back when we talked about John's ex section, excellent section on um, what, what we've done and the places where we've had meetings. We also met with Stanford and Berkeley about technology around voting. And there's, there are, there's infrastructure out there that we should at least reference that we know about that could facilitate some of these committees uh, balking at voting and uh, communication. Uh, we should at least reference, I I can, I'm happy to write that just to just. Advance. Yeah, we can, we can put that in. And it's just the point is that if we can't do voting at all, having tools to vote will not be terribly helpful. But in strategy B, we talk about voter referendums and polling. Right. And I think it is completely relevant for there. You know, how do you get. So if there were a pilot project, what we've just been talking about little bits, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I'll write that up for the next draft. So this is underwritten is I guess the way I would term this <laughs> and implementation challenges. <laughs> um, right. So should we uh, send you our thoughts on this? We identify the challenges, but not kind of, mostly we identify the challenges. Yep. And I don't and know the, the solutions yet. Yeah, I don't think we have, I guess my thought on this would be as loosely or maybe we can make it written a, a little bit better. But I think this is one where we're gonna have to go out and talk to people to, to have right. them, you know, so that we'll be able to write it um, with, a, it, it's not, <laughs> it does become implementation barriers rather than challenges, <laughs> um, you know, become more negative than just how to overcome them because I don't think we can solve them just by wordsmithing this at this point. So I would just suggest, let's just jump to our second prong of our three prong strategy. 
Okay, referenda, change the dumbs to uh. Yeah. Comments on this section? Um, I, I may be uh, repeating myself. I think the, the issue that's behind um, a lot of what I'm getting at or we're trying to get at with this, these words is um, uh, how representative is the opinion or the, the answer or the project that, that we come up with through participatory budgeting. And um, as I see it, uh, this is my rough and ready view of municipal politics, it's, you know, nowadays it's mostly squeaky wheels, you know, the people who speak up, the, yeah. the vested interests and so forth. Uh, whereas the mm -hmm. Charter Commission, if I've understood correctly, was mm -hmm. really interested in promoting uh, new and underrepresented voices. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I say, when I talk about referenda and polls, I'm thinking about things that are designed in a way that helps the elected representatives and the town manager to get a better and more confident understanding of what the true center of gravity or the weight of, or the different views in the public are rather than just the squeaky wheels. Absolutely. I think it's in Greensboro where the participatory budgeting is only for the two low income wards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, pro the projects have to be designed for those wards and the voters are the people who residents who live there. No, but no, they had multiple districts. Made. They just made sure that they, uh, at my memory is they districted it out to make sure that there were some from their low income. Mm -hmm. um, I know there is, there is a, there are some though that, yeah, but I'm, I'm totally agreeing with John. Yeah. What's the intention? Should we put that sentence about squeaky wheels? Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, if you like, sque like squeaky wheels, I mean, it's just, it's the you know, common way that things get done that, you know, the people who show up at meetings, people who have a vested interest. Yep, and who know how to work the system. Squeaky, how do you, with an A or what do you do? No, no, EA. Well, and there are other ways to say it. We can edit it later, you know. But that's true. But, well, squeaky wheel sounds like you have a problem. But maybe that's what this could be. Yeah, that's good. Well, the squeaky wheel gets oiled, and the oil is attention from a counselor or right. vote. Um, I think we admit this throughout, but to get actual polling um, that we feel is representative, I mean, I couldn't imagine the price, um, but we're talking in broad strokes here. So I think that's okay. I'm just trying to think well, in terms you of know, a this, practical recommendation. Yeah, this, this way in some way joins uh, part C and the participation of the academics and possibly students, in other words, and the community participation officers and possibly an ongoing participatory budgeting committee, uh, there's a lot of work that it would need to be done to design the right kinds of questions and how you do the surveys with the goal being to give Kathy and her other counselors confidence that what they're getting in these results is truly representative, that it's giving them something useful rather than just more squeaky wheels. Right. I make it sound so easy, don't I? But I, you know, I would hope that, you know, all the brain power at the universities and colleges here might be able to come up with some, uh, some methods of uh, continuous polling, of being able to, you know, feel the pulse of the citizenry, of getting them involved before we get to the point of, a, of a, uh, an override referendum. Mm -hmm. And I think John Page's these I mean, there may be some methods. The best of them tend to be pretty expensive. Um, you know, uh, 
I, in a prior walk of life, I did sur a lot of surveys and you watched it becoming harder and harder to get what you even began to hope for as a representative sample. Mm -hmm. We were regularly missing um, low income uh, and uh, we were regularly missing anyone who spoke a different language. The best we did was in Israel where we had that, we, we did it in five languages. Um, but, and so, but, but, you know, it just, it, these were, these got more and more expensive because the phone didn't work as well because people were screening their calls and their mobile phones ha don't have 413 uh, labels to them. And, and paper polls don't work very well and mm -hmm. in-person polls don't work very well. And, you know, you just can keep going on on how do you, uh, how do you, we can't even get people to fill out their census forms. Um, right. So well, that's the interest in part A of having a, a bait or a lure. You get yep. people, oh, there's money here. I, I can right. have a real effect on how it's, right. done. but, you know, people, I guess, just don't take that attitude towards these huge amounts that get spent in, in the ordinary course of a budgeting year. So I wonder if maybe the heading for this is, it's more, the catch-all is getting a pulse on what the resident priorities are. Referenda and polls are the method by which we get that pulse. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, just looking ahead, we've got Engage UMass and colleges. Um, they're part of, the residents. So I don't know that we should or want to separate out the college community as this separate subcategory of residents. I thought we were trying to move away from that as a town, but um, but no, I think that's a really important thing is trying to, to diversify the voices that are being in, heard and and how do we do that? I think what John's getting at is that the colleges are institutions. They're the major, it's like, you know, if we had a steel company in town who had a, you know, the, it's a major uh, employer, it's the major business. It's what our town's business economy is all about. That you often look to institutional support for something like this by people who should have a stake. Right, maybe we want to specify back in the introduction, um, and we can write this later, that residents refer to, and then, you know, to say that it's, so we, because we've always tried to remember not to say citizens, yeah. and if we want to include residents as being high school students and middle school students and undocumented migrant, you know, uh, part-time workers who live here, I think, maybe that's something we throw into the introduction. But how uh, about changing C to something like engage major local institutions? Well, let me just go back to what John wrote here, although maybe it, this is, and he's not here today. I thought this idea was different in that mm -hmm. he was hoping some professors would love this idea and get a big grant and engage some <laughs> graduate students to help the town figure out how to do it. It wasn't so much get student participation as right. a different kind of resident. It was like, go out there and see whether the Ford Foundation or the name a big foundation yeah. wants, to, wants to fund a pilot with us and figures out how we would do polling. It was technical, you know, it wasn't. Right. So it was, it, it, I just changed and obtain. It was like, go get, go, do some work and go get some money for us. <laughs> I thought that was what this one, this one was that made it different than B. I agree. That's what he had in mind. Maybe we should wait for him. Or what do we think? I think it's an important point. It's different from B. So, you know, he did this, the goal here is to identify and secure some seed resources, both monetary and in kind. You know, so it was like, you know, some professors would assign students to this, they would, yeah, so, so we might not, you know, this is one if the commission closes down, who's going to make any, I, I said, how do you think this might happen in an email to him? And he says, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm hoping someone out there might. And I said, who was going to reach out to which you know political science professor out there that would say, hey, this is cool. Let me let me um, go try to get some grant money for this. Um, Just like the subsequent follow up committee could do that. So what we want to do with this is we want to draw upon the expertise right. that's available yes. instead of engage. Because engage to me, I'm like, okay, that's where we're engaging the students. Right. Right. We draw upon. And so. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Liz, excellent language. I think I threw out like leverage. Yeah. Because I agree. Engage makes me think of the individuals, not the institution. Good. So I'm going to note that it's quarter after five. John, do you have to leave now? I just don't want us uh, to run out of time. Unfortunately, I do. I have to just get prepared for the trivia bee. For what? For something. The the Amherst Education Foundation trivia bee. So I'm oh, headed to go on. set that's some tonight. items up for that. <laughs> Already. I'm not yes, there to defend so my championship. Oh, well. Here. <laughs> so let me, I just, I just don't want us to suddenly have everybody hang up and we don't have a plan for the next step. So there. since everybody seems to be a little bit on this option C and maybe this is a good place to stop and do our plan our next meeting and Let's then pick this up. Okay. And then I would I would encourage the close readers, Liz being one of them, um, just sent me marked up in the easiest way of typos. So we don't have, you know, that just gets taken care of. Um, can, can we all send you our yeah. Okay, let's thank you. First so just make make them typos or comments like I don't understand this. This needs to be fixed, rather than everyone trying to, you know, pure typos fix you know fix them. Um, and then I'll I'll incorporate the typo stuff. Okay. I'll send I will send this document out to everyone so they're working off this version. <laughs> okay. And I want to thank you, Kathy. You've done a you are the busiest person I know. I think literally, yeah. probably, and you've had a really tough month. And uh, I just appreciate um, the leadership you've taken in um, wrestling this memo or outline or whatever we're going to call it. So thank you. Um, uh, and I think we made huge progress here. So for our next meeting agenda, I suggest that we finish, we continue with this or go back and see if this conversation has sparked any other additional substantive ideas. And we're going to talk about if we decision making as an element of this, what we think about that, and the idea of an ongoing committee. And if anybody, I'll be in touch with John about the agenda as the vice chair. If anybody has other agenda items, send them. I'm a big believer that everybody should participate in setting the agenda. And when is the next meeting? So that's the next thing. Okay, our very next meeting is December. Wait, I have written down here. Got so many pieces, 12th, I think. You mean, do you mean November? November. <laughs> what did I say? You said December, but you know. no, I didn't mean December. Okay. Uh, we have it on the okay. It's no November twelfth. So uh, that's when we agreed on the last time we set three meetings, and then we didn't have the previous one. Do people want to meet after that on December third or tenth? I just would love to have two meetings ahead because we're all so busy. So we can block off, say, you know, times that we know we. I'd rather make it December 10th. Um, and Our next meeting would be Thanksgiving, which obviously we're not going to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather make it December 10th for the following reason. If we can get a bit more work done on November 12th, we could. Uh, have some some staff discussions on some of these ideas and report back on December 10th. Okay. Or bring someone into our meeting if we wanted to at that time. That yeah, point. that would just put them in the public realm, Meg. Okay. So, you know, I was thinking of quiet, quiet conversations. <laughs> okay. So how many uh, other comments on December 10th as our next meeting as opposed to December 3rd? Any comments? Any Hearing none, our next meeting will be November 12th and the meeting after that will be December 10th. Great. And then, and then I'm gonna send this back to everyone through Meg that what we just did, 
So typo-y kinds of things, uh, this needs to be changed, Com comment bubbles. So we're no one's gonna be doing major writing on this, you know, at this point. So we're gonna just come back to it. But if it's typo, I can fix, I can fix them all. Um, well, Kathy, what if this discussion has sparked some thinking about a sentence or two that's more substantive? When would we do that? Uh, I think drop, drop it in, you know, drop it in. And Liz had, you know, put somewhere that, you know, reach out to students. So students feel like, you know, our, our kids um, to get them involved in making ideas. So dropping a sentence or two in, I think would be fine. It's just, you know, it group writing is even harder than what we just did. So, um, so just do that selectively. <laughs> okay, I, I just want to drop in the reference to Berkeley and Stanford. Yeah. All right. Yes, if anyone can fix fix the, the towns we talk to and or individually or as a group. Um, and I have notes that we need an Appendix A and the Appendix B is who did we talk to, you know, so those don't have to be written now. Right. So I'm sorry, I need to, can we clarify, we're all going, so you're going to, Kathy, you're going to send out the new version that you've just been working on. Yep. And we're all going to take that and add our own comments and then send that back to you via Meg. No, or do just we do a from it? Or or do do we you send it to Meg? Meg sends it to John. John, and we pass it along so that we're not all making the same typo corrections. No. I mean, if we only pass it on to one person at a time. Well, I would love to do what you just did, Elizabeth. Liz, and I'm going to ask, I heard, this is the only thing I heard in a planning board meeting that I thought was, oh my God, um, Mike Burt Whistle asked to do just that. He said, I have some ideas and I have some questions on this. Can I send mine to Chris Brestriff and then she sends mine on to other people or can she send theirs so I don't have to, and she said, I can't do that. You can all send me your ideas and I can create one large memo with everybody's ideas in it, but we can't do it sequentially because then we're collaborating not in the public in some way, right. okay. which, uh, which when it comes to typos seems to me. Let's just you know, ignore typos for now. Yeah, so let's just ignore typos. So have it be anything substantive, um, drop a sentence in or do a comment bubble like, I think this needs to be fixed. I don't think it's clear. And I will insert all of those into uh, a, a, a but, uh, thing with colors. So big, okay. when, when do you need everything, Kathy, in order for us to have it ready to send out on? Well, what's the, today is the 29th and is the 12th two weeks from now? Yes. Um, we'll all be relieved, politically relieved. I hope no, so. we won't. Or, or, we'll be, or we'll be suicidal. Um, but um, if, if we so said- We're in jail. I will send this out to everyone now, you know, once we get off or today, um, seven days from now, it's not going to take me that long to do that. So today is a Thursday. So by Friday of next week. Okay. That's all I'm doing. November right? 6th. That's November 6th. Yep. Okay. Is that working everybody? Comments to Kathy by Friday, the November 6th. Yep. And then, then I can, I can, assemble those and get it to Meg by Monday so she can get it out to people in a packet. Right. And I send it out separately. I send it to Angela to post, but I also send it to everybody directly because I find that link tricky. Well, then you need to do that, Meg, also because Angela posts them as a PDF. Yeah. So if people want to actually insert their stuff into a document, you know, if it's easier. Right. Um, Great. So um, um, do you want to send Meg do you want to send it to me to do the typos before you send it out? I can do the typo. I can turn Great. around typos quickly. And okay. then we don't need to spend time at our next meeting talking about typos. Yay. Thank you, Great. Liz. OK. And if Kathy sees some, she can just change them. Well, ask. No, Kathy, don't. No, but it's very important to have a separate proofreader or two. No, it's probably. really good because some of them are missing words. And the, the right. spell check doesn't catch the fact that you're just you miss the verb or. Yeah, none of us can yeah. proof our own work as well. You know, it's always good to have a second set of eyes or third. So I don't know if we have energy to look at our timeline. My, I have a feeling we don't. 
uh, and my desire is that we agree at some point soon on when we want to engage the committees and the public so that we start lining that up. For example, I gave earlier, if we wanted the League of Women Voters to help us with a, with a forum, uh, they, they get good participation. So I don't, some, no, but I don't think we have the time and energy to do that today. But, no, I don't think so either. And I think maybe make sure we carve out a 10 minute discussion next meeting, Meg, on you know, when we are most likely to have a draft we're willing to share to anyone before we get the league to set up a meeting for us. So do we think that's February? I, you know, I, I just, you know, our best guess, um, we have right. to be done by June, but working backwards from June. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, so let's just need to, but we don't we can't we don't have time to do wait until we finish the draft and then start thinking about outreach. We have to do a little anticipation because right. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, all I'm saying is I I think best about yes, let's do outreach and tell them we're going to have a hopefully we'll be ready by X date and then right. you, you should then do it. So let's just look at a timeline that way. And, then, and let's also for the next meeting think of the individuals that we need to speak with either. Oh, this cat, get down, get down. Either uh, on the sidelines <laughs> or uh, it come to one of our meetings. You know, let's think about how we structure those conversations because they'll be really important uh, information to sharpen our uh, proposal. And that has to happen before we go to the public, obviously. So good. Yeah, I don't think we have the energy right now. So, and it's a little premature. Um, I would like to invite anyone in the public who would like to speak to raise your hand. And there what? are none. There I'm are looking none. at attendees, there are none. There are none, good thing we left a little time, very little time for that. Okay, so we have for our topics for the next meeting, go over this, the outline again. If we have time, talk about decision-making, uh, talk about an ongoing committee and talk approximately about when we think we'll have a draft in order to begin our uh, conversations with individuals and our outreach to the public. Anything else anybody wants to say or add? John, have a blast at the Trivia Bee. That is always a fun event. It should be good. So, have fun. yes. Okay, so, so he's, what, he has five minutes now or four minutes to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I. I have, I'm gonna to have to add a lot to these notes, but I have these, so I will, I will prepare that and send that to you, Meg. John, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, everybody. Bye, everyone. Motion to adjourn. Most yes, second. thank you. Oops, motion to adjourn. Yes. Kathy, okay. yes. John seconds, all, in, all right, John, do we have to really do a roll call? No, no, we can just all say all yes. 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 <laughs> Bye. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, bye. Bye. Everyone. This was great. It's getting. Pro we're making progress. <laughs>